Okay, so we're still talking about some basic linear algebra because it's going to be useful in this course. Um, and it's quite frankly useful in lots of places. Um, I'm going to give you an example of that today that's sort of something you know, but maybe you don't know exactly how to take the linear algebra approach. So uh, maybe you'll find it interesting. So anyway, um, this is where we stopped last time. We have something in, in linear algebra, because remember, in linear algebra, I mean, this, this matrix equation is just, it's a system of linear equations that we could write out, right? I mean, we write it in the matrix form because it's more compact that way. But we could write out three equations there, right? And so when you think of them in the context of the three equations, these rules make perfect sense, right? Uh, swapping rows doesn't change the solution, right? If I have if I had three equations, right, if I had written these out, right, so A1, A11 x times x1 plus A12 times x2 plus A13 times x3 is equal to B1, right, if I wrote that out on a piece of paper, and I wrote the second equation and the third, right, and I wanted to solve them as a system, like you've been doing since you know, algebra 2 or whatever in high school, does it matter if you just simply take the third equation and put it in the first? in the way you wrote them down on the paper? Of course not. Right? So that same rule applies here when it's a system of equations. Right? So when it's a, a, you know, a written like this, the same thing applies. The, I don't change the solution if I take the third row and put it in the second spot, or the second one in the first. Right? So swapping rows doesn't change the solution. Adding rows together doesn't change the solution. We know we can do that in a system of equations, right? We can, sometimes it's useful to just add one equation to the next because it, you know, it automatically eliminates one of the variables, right? And that's some of the tools you've been using since algebra. So adding rows together doesn't change the solution. And <coughs> multiplying rows by a scalar doesn't change the solution. So, you know, you can, any, any equation, you know, if x is equal to y, then 5x is equal to 5y, right? Doesn't change the solution. So really by combining these three simple rules, we can solve any system of equations. So when I say like adding rows together doesn't change the solution, and the reason that we're, we're trying to write the rules as simple as possible because ultimately this is how a computer implements like a direct solution of a, of a linear system, right? So you want the rules to be as simple as possible and you can just combine the rules to do more complex things, right? So, you know, if adding the rows together doesn't change the solution, well, neither does subtracting the rows, right? But you might think of subtraction as multiplying by negative one and then adding. Right? So it's just a combination of these simple rules. Okay. So uh, this is exactly what your computer does when you make a direct solution, you know, like in, uh, when, you make, when you use a direct solver, okay? So there are, there are things called iterative solvers. So uh, what an, an iterative solver, you just guess this vector, and you plug it in, and then you take the new vector over here, and it becomes your new guess, and you just continue to do that until you converge to some tolerance, some, you know, there's some small error between the guesses, right? So that's called an iterative solution. Uh, uh, but it, when you perform these row operations, that's called a direct solution, okay? So in MATLAB, when you, when you do A backslash B, what do you think it does? Huh? You think it does an iterative or direct? Depends. The cool thing about A backslash B is that it's smart enough to know what's going to be more efficient. So it turns out that if the, mul if the matrix is fully dense, so you know if, if all of these entries are uh, non-zero, then a direct solution is better, is faster usually. Um, but if it's a if it's a very sparse matrix, so if you know a lot of times in mechanics or physics we'll end up with large matrices that are sort of diagonally dominated, right? And so then most of the off-diagonal entries are zero. In that case, um, then in that case, it'll try an iterative solution, right? 
And some of you may remember in Res, um, in Res 3 when we had the project where we were solving a fairly big system of equations, I instructed you to make a sparse, like inform MATLAB that it's a sparse data structure, which all you have to do is wrap it in sparse, right? The word sparse. And that sort of gets rid of all the non-zero entries in the storage. And then it, when you run a backslash b, it automatically goes into an end of sol. So, uh, but for dense matrices, direct solves are better. And we'll, uh, we'll look at an example here of actually, you know, we'll do this once ourselves, applying these sort of row operations. So, we have the system 2, 3, minus 2, 0, 0, 3, 1, 0, 2. And I'm going to write it like this. So obviously this is A. And then, you know, we're looking for the unknown X. And I'm going to write it like this. 6, minus 6, 3. So this was B in that equation. So that's I just I just wrote this system of equations like this. This is sometimes called the augmented matrix. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to perform row operations on that matrix until I turn A into the identity matrix. That was that's my goal. Right. So what is the identity matrix? It's just ones on the diagonal. Right. So my goal. Is, is to make this part look like this. Okay? So, and I'm just going to follow those three simple rules. So since ultimately I need a one in the first entry, and my third row already has a one there, I'm just going to swap the third and first row. That's going to be the first thing I do. So I'm going to say row 1 and row 3, we're going to interchange. And so then 1, 0, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And most of these, most of these operations are so easy that you can do multiple ones at one time, you know, in practice, if you're working on this yourself. But I'm just going to go really slow and be very explicit this first time. Right? So we're going to do sort of one operation at a time. Okay? Now, you notice the second row uh, has a three in the third entry. And ultimately, I want a one there somewhere, right? So. What if I just multiply the first, the, th the second row by one third? So if I, I'm going to say one third times row two. Right? So this is my, this is my uh, third rule, I guess. Right? I can multiply the equation by a constant; it doesn't change the answer. So then I'll have one zero. Okay. Now I have a one in the third entry, and I need that. You know that that's useful. Ultimately, I want it to look like this, right? So I, why don't I just swap the second and the third row? So row two and row three and interchange. By the way, there's no correct order. There's an infinite number of ways we could get to the same answer. OK. Hmm. 
now, so I'm close to where I want to be. I still need to, I need to eliminate this two, right? So, so the, the, usually the way I go about it is I, you know, I try to make the matrix upper triangular first, right? so that there's zeros all down here, and then, then it's easier to eliminate the ones above it. So uh, I really want to get rid of that two. So one way to get to do that would be to um, see I'm looking at my notes here and I'm going to take a different route, but hopefully we'll get to the same answer. We should, if I don't make a mistake. So what can I do to get rid of that two? Right, so sub, you said subtract twice the first row. Right? But let's put it in the words of my three simple rules. How about we multiply the first root row by minus two and add it to the second one? Right. So minus 2 row 1 plus row 2. <coughs> um, so minus 2 row 1 would have a minus 2 there. That would make that 0. This would still be 3. Then minus 2 times 2 is minus 4. Minus 6. Um, minus 2 times 3 is minus <coughs> 6 plus 6 is 0. 0, 0, 1. Minus 2. All right. Now it looks like if I if I divide the or multiply this the second equation by one third and I get my ones on the diagonal. So I'm going to say one third row two zero one minus two zero 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 one minus two all right so now I can just start eliminating these guys. Right? So I want to eliminate that one. I can just multiply the third row by 2 and add it to that one. Right? So I'm going to say 2 times row 3 plus row 2 or 1, 0, 2, Zero, one, zero. All right, so now I'm multiplying this by two. That's going to give me negative four, right? That I'm going to add right there. Then I want to get rid of this. So I'm going to multiply by negative two and add it there. Did I make a mistake? Multiply by negative two. It gives me no, no. That's what. Multiply by negative two. So then uh, minus 2 times row 3 plus row 1 gives me 1 
zero. The negative two cancels that guy. Then I have minus two times minus two, which gives me positive four plus three is seven. Zero, one, zero, minus four. Okay. Now remember, this is a linear system of equations, so these, these represent equations. So this is like, this, this equation is x1, x1 plus 0x2 plus 0x3 is equal to 7, or x1 is equal to 7, right? This equation is 0x1 plus x2 plus 0x3 is equal to minus 4. So you might just say that's x2 equals minus 4. Right? And this equation is 0x1 plus 0x2 plus x3 is equal to minus 2. Therefore, the, the, the solution of this system of equations is that. <coughs> so the, the solution vector is 7 minus 4 minus 2. So x1 equals 7, x2 equals minus 4, x3 equals minus 2. Well, I thought I had the solution there, but um, since I don't, I want you to believe me. Okay, I'll just open Mathematica, De define my matrix A, my matrix B, and solve the linear system of equations 7 minus 4, 2. Okay, so that's an example of how to use row operations. And, you know, for the most part, uh, you know, you, you guys who know me know that I don't care to ever see you do that. You should use a computer, right? Uh, however, we're about to talk about eigenvectors, and it can be useful to sort of see the procedure, um, because something sort of odd happens with, an eig with respect to an eigenvector, and uh, so I, wanna, I want you to know what I'm doing as we go through the procedure uh, for eigenvectors. Um, okay. <coughs> 